Hello, sports fan. This is Stephen Hill for Sports Choice Plus. I'm bringing you a very special NFL mock draft of the top 10 picks of the draft. Before I get right into that, I want to make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel so you can get all the updates each and every time I go live with NFL content here on the YouTube platform. Uh, without further ado, we're going to make sure we get this started. Uh, looking at this, uh, a lot of these teams in the top first 10 picks are really set what they're going to do. I don't believe it's going to be a lot of movement as far as trades in the top 10 picks. So according to me, this is how it could possibly play out. And I just think that it's a lot of uh, talented teams, you know, in this not only top 10, but a lot of guys are going to get game changing talent along the way. So these are going to be the top 10 picks in my mock draft. Coming in at number one, you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars with new head coach Urban Meyer. This seems like a match made in heaven. When you look at just what uh, Trevor Lawrence the number one overall projected pick is going to be. He has all the skill set to get it done. When you look at the height, when you look at the versatility of being able to use his legs and also his arm, he can make all the throws. He's very seasoned, comes from University of Clemson. And I think this is what this team needs to move into the next generation of the Jaguars fan base and also this team. Um, Urban Meyer is going to get off to a great start, I believe. And, you know, what a way to kick off a new era is with a new quarterback. So, Gardner Minshew is out of here, and you have to think in mind, you have Trevor Lawrence to lead the way at this point. Coming in at number two, it was much speculation that, you know, the Jets would use a lot of this ammunition to get Deshaun Watson. It turns out I don't think they're going to use that uh, to get Deshaun Watson. They're going to stick stamp hat where they're at. Justin Fields from the Ohio State University. Looking at just how talented he is, he's a picture-perfect quarterback as far as dual threat goes. He can make the big plays with his arm. He can make the big plays with his leg. He's not that fast as far as what you uh, see just from an eye test, but his football speed when he's playing in the game is a lot faster than what a 40 time will tell you. He's delivered time and time again at University of Ohio State against some of the best matchups you've seen. And this year, you saw him go up against different teams like Bama, up against Clemson. He took shot after shot and kept coming. He may not have been victorious against Bama, but he proved a lot of naysayers wrong because he kept fighting. He kept pushing the ball downfield, and he's a warrior. So they're going to get a pretty good quarterback in New York with the Jets. And I think the Justin Fields is is pretty good. He has pretty he's is pretty athletic and his his down the field vision and accuracy is a lot better than people give him credit for. So I think the Jets are getting a pretty good talent right there at number two. Coming to number three, the Miami Dolphins. Uh this player did not play last year. He took the uh COVID sit out and he basically trained in the offseason and during the regular season on his own. You're looking basically at Jamar Chase, LSU. Uh, junior, and you saw what he did when he played with Justin Jefferson and how they were special together with Joe Burrow. The guy is a freak. He's one of the most talented guys in the draft, an uh, uh, instant playmaker, and adding him with Tua as the quarterback, you know, they need a number one receiver down there in Miami, and I think that Jamar Chase will be that guy. The only question is, how is he, how, how he going to fit in with the culture in Miami, with Coach Flores and what they want to do? I think he'll fit fine. I think the coach Flores has an eye for talent. He's going to put Jamar Chase on that team and help to it with playmakers that can get the ball down the field quickly. Uh, coming in at number four, this is no surprise. Uh, Zach Wilson out of BYU is going to the Atlanta Falcons. I think Matt Ryan knows his time's up. This is probably going to be Matt Ryan's last year in Atlanta. A lot of people have been calling for his job since his rookie year. But, you know, Matt Ryan has done some pretty special things in Atlanta, won an MVP in Atlanta as well. But he's just not producing enough to keep him around for too much more longer. So I think that this move right now signifies that they're going to be moving on from Matt Ryan within a year or less. And I think that, you know, sitting on the bench a little bit for Mr. Wilson is not going to be a bad thing, especially learning behind Matt Ryan and potentially playing with Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley before the season ends is one of those things that could possibly happen. That's the number four pick for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, coming in at number five, you're looking at Penny Sewell, the offensive tackle from the University of Oregon. This gentleman is a large gentleman, and he's a weapon. When you look at the tackle position, he can play either side. He can be the strong side left tackle, or he can be the strong side right tackle. It doesn't matter. You know, Joe Burrow needs protection, and this is the way that I think this team needs to go. They need to add guys like this to be able to be bodyguards for Joe to give him time to throw the ball, to give him time to make reads down the field. If this offense is going to get better, they have to go this route and go offensive line. It's a good thing. I like that. Coming in at number six, 
I think uh, this could be big, you know, but I like Devontae Smith. I think that Jamar Chase, if he was on the board, the Eagles would take him. Or, you know, Devontae Smith, whichever one was available, they was going to take because they need playmakers at the wide receiver position. You see that they let Alshon Jeffrey go. You see that they let Deshaun Jackson go. They haven't had a big play threat since Deshaun Jackson left the very first time. They haven't adequately replaced him. And I think this is going to be one of those moves that help replace him. I think when it's all said and done, they need this pick to pan out. They need a wide receiver, not only in free agency, but in the NFL draft. I think that's going to be a big part of this. And I think that the Eagles are going to get it right with this pick. I like that pick right there at number six with the Heisman Trophy winner, Devontae Smith. Coming in at number seven, I like the Detroit Lions to select linebacker out of Penn State, Micah Parsons. When you look at just how fast he is, the Lions need upgrades at all different kind of positions on the defensive side of the ball. And you're looking at what they can get with this premium pick. He's a tackling machine. He's going to be able to be almost like a Luke Keekley, Not to a certain extent of that, but uh, as far as the tackles go. But being able to pinpoint where the ball is going to go, get there in a hurry, and get the defender down. It's, it's one of those things where when I watch his tape, it pops off. Uh, 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 he's all over the screen. He makes plays, not just from the standpoint of tackling, but stopping plays from getting extra yardage is one of his specialties. And I think that that's going to be a big part of this. Um, coming in at number eight, you look at the Carolina Panthers. This is tricky here because the Carolina Panthers have several different needs. But when I kept doing the odds over and over and over, Trey Lance from North Dakota State is the guy that they're going to be taking. Let's just face it. Teddy Bridgewater was a quarterback that they were taking as a stopgap just to get somebody in place. This move here allows Trey to sit back and take a year to develop, possibly less, um, possibly get into the season before then. So um, the organization needs a face, and this is going to be the face of organization. Since Cam left, they haven't had a face. I know Christian McCaffrey is pretty good, but you got to think. They're going to keep their assets and build around Christian McCaffrey, and this is going to be one of those guys that helps add to that. Um, you know they paid him a lot of money last year, um, and he was hurt for most of the year. So you want to keep him fresh. And I think that with this move here, this signifies that they're really going to try to get better. Um, coming in literally at number nine, the Denver Broncos, Caleb Farley. I think Caleb Farley out of... Uh, you know, Virginia Tech is a pretty solid corner, a big physical corner who not only, uh, you know, he can play a little top corner and, and be the number one guy. I think he can also move around the field as well. I think he's young, athletic. He has the speed to be able to catch up with guys. And you're going to need that in that division because you have wide receivers everywhere in the AFC West. You see the Denver Broncos are retooling that defense a little bit. They're going to need young guys like this that can help carry the banner for them on defense. And I think when it's all said and done, you're going to see his impact as soon as he's drafted. Solid character guy. This is a guy that I think that you really, really, really want to look after. Um, and I think, look out. I think it can be really something that, that, that they take moving forward. And I think it's going to pan out well for this pick if they do that pick. The Denver Broncos really um, need a lot of good news right now. And I think this will be a good news. And coming in at number 10, the last pick in the top uh, 10 mock draft, I think the the Dallas Cowboys are going to go ahead and snatch up Patrick Sertan, the second. I think that not only his skill set was all over the place and you saw what he was able to do in the national championship game, it was on full display. And then you're also looking at what he did in the uh, championship series and how throughout every single game he played in the SEC, Patrick Sertan was the best corner on the field at all times and one of the best athletes on the field at all times. What does Dallas need help with? Stopping people from scoring. How are they going to do that? The cornerback positions and the safety positions have to be upgraded, and they need to do that now. They just signed Dak Prescott to the deal. They got him out the way. Now you can focus on the defensive side of the ball, getting rid of some of those bad contracts, and adding some better young youth on that team that's really going to make a difference and make a difference soon. So all you NFL teams, feel free. Get in the comment section. If you're a fan of any of the teams that I did a mock draft for, let me know what you think about my top 10. We're going to be coming back soon with more draft picks and more insight as well. And as always, definitely check out Sports Choice Plus on the YouTube platform. Click the link in the description and then go over to the Facebook channel so we can debate with you each and every day as well. Thank you so very much and we'll see you shortly.